Okay, so uh, first and foremost, we want to start off by giving all the praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashem, Rakar Kadash, to the honest apostles and other great millstone, peace and salutations to all Sesei Akim, enduring afflictions, making the calling and election sure, Shambhal Kabar, to Brother Tazaka, and uh, just back with another one. You know, Lord willing, this be out of fine to the elect, Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashem, Rakar Kadash, Barakadam, to all Sesei listeners who may hear this. So, um, let's just kick it off. This is Psalms 105 and uh, 15. It says, saying, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that said, don't touch his anointed, man. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, can we get that word anointed real quick? To the word anointed. Time. That's the Strong's H 4899. Strong's H 4899. Mashiach. Mashiach. Right. And, uh, that's uh, Mashiach, you know. It says, um, of the Messiah, Messianic Prince, it says, of the King of Israel, of the High Priest of Israel, of Cyrus. Of the patriarchs as anointed kings. Go out, go out to the road strong for peace. You click on it? Yes, say, uh, let me get home, go down a little bit more. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yes, it's like, no, that was it. Go down one more. I don't know what happened. Okay, right there. Just Consecrated on. person. Kind of. So it says, uh, from 80, oh, was it 48, 86, it says anointed, it says usually a consecrated person. Priest or saint, specifically the Messiah, anointed Messiah. So, so it says, is a, is a king, priest, or saint a consecrated person? You know, so um, can we look that word consecrated up in the uh, etymology? Or what you, what you, what you, what you I, yeah, I just went into that root word. Uh -huh. It says to smear, anoint, spread a liquid, to smear, to anoint as consecration, to anoint, consecrate, to be anointed. Ka, ka, yo. So being anointed pretty much means you're a consecrated person. You know, you consecrate it. If you're anointed, you consecrate it. Now, what does consecrate mean? You know? Consecrate says, in late 1400s, it says, make or declare sacred by certain ceremonies or rites. Mm. So make or declare sacred by certain ceremonies or rites, mm -hmm. you know? So really, ultimately, the whole uh, nation of Israel is consecrated, you know. Mm -hmm. It says here, to make holy. God, to make holy. You know, we are, no, we are holy people, man. God, yeah. Holy priesthood, man. God, yeah. Yeah, get down. It says, devote. It says, uh, for the ten layer form, it says, of, uh, with, together, uh, to make or declare sacred. Mm -hmm. It says, to devote or dedicate from profound feeling. Verb to oh, uh, desecrate. I guess that's that's okay. Oh, different. Uh, yeah, I think it's like maybe the up. Uh, that's the verb version. Yeah, come. Kind of. It says uh, divest of sacred character, treat with sacrilege. Mm. Yeah, sacred character. Well, actually, that's the opposite of uh, right. Yeah, kind of. Right, right. Kind of. So that says to profane. So kind of. you understand the opposite of that kind is of. be anointed. Desecrate. Right, kind of. Holy and profane. Kind, of. yeah, kind. Of. But it's yeah. Oh, matter of fact, let's gotta get that right. Yeah, yeah, kind, kind. Uh, yeah, get that uh, word consecrate for me. Google, because it was one more definition I wanted. You know, oh, you were know, looking at? Uh, yeah. Gotta get up for this thing. It's uh, in Leviticus chapter ten and verse uh, ten. It says, "And that ye may put difference." Between holy and ho unholy, and between unclean and unclean. It's like in between unclean and clean, you know. So like the brother was saying, you know, uh, consecrated and desecrated, you know, 
uh, pretty much means holy and profane, you know, clean and unclean, which, you know, Yahweh Bashim Yashai, he anointed the nation of Israel to separate us, you know, set us apart from these other nations, you know. And uh, Yahweh Bashim Yashai also has anointed men, you know, in, in separate offices or, you know, devoted to a certain uh, purpose or will, you know. Matter of fact, it's going to be this word consecrate right here. It's going to go more into it. It says, Khan says, make or declare something typically a church is to sacred mm -hmm. to dedicate formally to a religious or divine purpose yeah we dedicate uh we dedicate what up it says dedicate formally to a religious or divine purpose yeah dedicate formally to a religious or divine purpose so yeah but she has divine purposes that uh men are uh dedicated unto well when we went into that word anointed in the blue letter it brought up the messiah yeah how shall my and what was he dedicated to to be the sacrificial lamb, sacrificial lamb of the nation of Israel, you know? So, you know, Yahweh Hashem Asha has uh, different people set up for different uh, purposes, you know? Chosen and, uh, you know, put in order in, in certain offices mm. to do certain things, you know, for anointing for certain uh, divine purposes, you know? Ordain someone to a sacred office. Khan, that's the one I wanted. Khan, <laughs> ordain someone to a sacred office. You know, so you have Hashem Asha has ordained uh, apostles. The apostles, he ordained the elders. You know, he ordained uh, you know uh, brothers, camp leaders. You know, uh, he he put certain orders. He put different men in certain positions. You know, because that's their that's their particular office that he's uh, consecrated them unto. You mm -hmm. know, to fulfill his divine purpose. You know, now. We can't buck up against the purpose and the will of Yahabashim Asha. Unless happily you've been found to fight against Yahabashim Asha. You mm -hmm. know? Yep. Now we on it with Ordain. I have the quick one. Con. The spirit that was in Jeremiah 1. Mm -hmm. I was reading that earlier. Con. <laughs> Con. It's Jeremiah 1. And just to get to the point, verse 4 it says, Then the word of the Lord Yahweh came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordain thee a prophet unto mm -hmm. the nations. Mm -hmm. And actually, in that word consecrate, if you go into Google, the, the, the synonyms, mm -hmm. one of those words is sanctify. Ooh. You know? So in this verse here, you know, in Jeremiah 1 5, it says, And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, mm -hmm. and I ordain thee a prophet. So, you know, that's that's the, that's a consecrate. That's to be anointed, man. You know? If you were to go out in the first precept in Psalms 105, you know, just to get that again. Verse 15 is saying, touch not, touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Prophets, you see? <laughs> so ultimately, hey man, to be a prophet, prophet, to be the anointed, that's a highly, um, it was something that's ordained by the Most High. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you, had, you brought those words up, being holy, which we understand as being separate, man. There was a separation. Uh, what was that, Leviticus 11? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a difference between a holy and profane, man. Mm -hmm. Mm, hold on. Since you said that, let me get one quick thing. Let's go to Genesis four hours. Come real quick, because that's 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 a heavy point that you're saying. Because you could be anointed on the left hand or the right hand. You know, it's a mm -hmm. consecrated person. Yep. You know, to fulfill the purpose, the divine purpose of Yahweh Shemal Shah, which we know Yahweh Shemal Shah, he work on the left hand and the right hand. You know, that's why even uh, in Ezekiel fourteen, what we brought out yesterday, you know, it said if a prophet be deceived. I, the Lord, have received that prophet. You know what I'm saying? So, Yahweh Shema Shai has uh, men set up on the left hand and the right hand who are anointed. You know, you you could be anointed and be a consecrated person uh, just if, if you're fulfilling the will of Yahweh Shema Shai regardless of uh, what your purpose is. Just like here in uh, Genesis, let's start from 4. 4 and 4? Uh, yeah, we might as well have kind of. Okay, this is Genesis 4 and verse 4. It says, and Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord Yahweh had respect unto Abel and unto his offering. Mm -hmm. It says, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Mm -hmm. It says, verse 6, And the Lord Yahweh said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? Why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted and if thou dost not well send life at their door and unto thee 
shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. It says, verse 8, And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. It says, And the Lord Yahweh said unto Cain, Where is Abel, thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I, thy, am, I, slash it, am I my brother's keeper? It says, And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. It says, And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. Mm. It's like Numbers 35 and 33, man. Mm -hmm. That's how this thing works. Yep. It says, When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. Cain said unto the Lord, Yahweh, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Mm -hmm. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall slay me. Mm -hmm. It says in verse 13, And the Lord Yahweh said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord Yahweh set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. So Cain was anointed. Cain was anointed. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's deep. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, Cain, he actually uh, was the wicked. He was the first murderer, the first thief. You know, he brought an a, 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 a unsacred uh, offering unto the Lord, man. You know, he, he pretty much bucked on the Lord, man. He rebelled against the Lord, you know. So... Like, so Cain, uh, you know, he, he was wicked, but the Lord said, Anyone who touches Cain, they're gonna receive sevenfold, man. You know, they're gonna receive sevenfold for touching Cain, you know, which means that he was the anointed. Yeah, but said, Touch not mine anointed, man. You know, so regardless if uh, if if, if the anointed is set up on the left hand or the right hand side, yeah, but he he rocking with his anointed. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. you can't uh you can't buck up against the will of Yahbashim Al Shah. If you try to buck up buck up against his anointing, you're bucking up against Yahbashim Al Shah, you know? Mm. Powerful point, yep. That's why Yahbashim Al Shah's so heavy about that, you know? You, you got some up. Um thinking there was a Roman Z, no, I'm thinking. Let's see. Thirty-three says, "Who shall lay anything to the charge of the Most High's elect? It is the Most High that justifies." Mm -hmm. You know, who can who? This is a hypothetical question. Mm -hmm. It says, "Who shall lay anything to the charge of the Most High's elect?" You know, so, hey man, you know, you can't be out here thinking that you're doing this on your own will. You know, you know, you got you know, um, like this guy in the world. You know, I've seen him talk about some once in a while. You know, he used to be in his knowledge. But he, he, he's like a Pan-African now. And he's thinking like, you know, you, you can't just be out here waiting, man. We got to take it. We got to do our own thing. We got to unite. We got to come together. You know what I'm saying? We got to fight the so-called white man or whatever. You know what I'm saying? We can't be out here uh, waiting to get saved. Like, it's like, all right. <laughs> like, you know, someone like that, we don't even argue with him at this point, man. We look, let the filthy be filthy, you know? Mm -hmm. But we understand, you know, like this verse brings out, who shall lay anything to the charge of the Most High's elect? You know, uh, Romans 9. You know, who has resisted the Most High's will, man? Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Should have got that. You know? Nah, that was great. Okay. This is in um, Romans 9, and um, verse 19, it says, Thou will say then unto me, why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Uh. You know, verse 20 says, Nay, O man, who art thou that replies against the Most High? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Mm. You know, because ultimately, hey amen. You know, you know, this chapter is talking about um, Jacob, you know, or Israel, you know, pertaining to uh, who was chosen, you know, and who, who was hated. All right, pursuant to verse 13, man, you know. But it says here in verse 21, it says, Have not the potter power over the clay of the same lump? It says, To make one vessel unto honor 
in another to dishonor. You know, that was really kind of the point. But he 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 chose or ordained certain vessels, right, for honor and to dishonor. You know, and you can't do nothing about it. You know, like this chapter is bringing out, man. You know, how you a lump of clay trying to uh, ordain yourself to do something else? You can't. It can't be done, man. Will to your your yourself to the will of your how about you shut. That's that just is what it is, it. man. You know what I'm saying? You can't you can't try to uh creep up no what? <laughs> try to creep through the window the yeah. same as a thief and a robber, yeah. man. You know what I'm saying? Uh you you gotta go with the order that you have a shut set up, man. You know, it, it is what it is. Yeah, how was shot knew that, man? He couldn't do nothing of his own yet. I, I come to do my father's will. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um kind of I got this in Jeremiah 27 uh, to touch on how you were saying uh, the brother you knew uh, and the truth who, you know, now he on his, uh, his Pan-African Kemet stuff, man. Mm -hmm. You know, and he, he was saying uh, basically, you know, we got to uh, rebel against uh, Esau. You know, we got to fuck up. Uh, you know, of the powers that be, we got to unite. You know, we got to make something happen. You mm -hmm. know, uh, let's get this. This uh Jeremiah chapter 27 in verse... Uh, I'll just start from the top. Uh, this, this, this Jeremiah chapter 27, verse 1. It says, In the beginning of the reign of jo Joachim, Jehoiakim, if I said that right, like Jehoiakim, Je Jehoiakim, yeah, I think that was just his water. The son of Josiah, king of Judah, came the word unto Jeremiah from the Lord, Yahweh Shah, saying, Thus said the Lord, Yahweh Shah, to me, Make the bonds and yokes and put them upon thy neck. And send them to the king of Edom, and to the king of Moab, and to the king of the Ammonites, and to the king of Tyrus, and to the king of Zidon, by the hand of the messengers which come to Jerusalem, unto Zedekiah, king of Judah, and command them to say unto their masters, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Jehovah, the God of Israel, Thus shall ye say unto your masters, I have made the earth, the man, and the beast that are upon, are upon the ground by my great power and by my outstretched arm, and have given it unto whom it seemed meet unto me. You know, so he consecrated men over, you know, men and beasts, you know. Uh, Daniel the fourth chapter tell you about that, you know. Uh, he giveth the kingdom to whomsoever he will. Yeah. You know, mm. it says, verse 6, And now have I given all these lands into the hand of Neb Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. You know, mm. so <laughs> can we get that word servant uh, in that verse? No, 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 I didn't see it. We get to that. But I, I always, since this scripture always stuck with me from when I first read this, when I first came into the truth. It said, Nebuchadnezzar, my servant. I was like, oh. You know what I'm saying? That, that always made me think. You know what I'm saying? If Nebuchadnezzar is a servant, Yahweh Shema Shah, for real deal, you anybody you want out here, man. You know? Mm hmm. Kind of. So a servant is the Strong's Age 5650. Strong's Age 5650. Evid. Evid. It says here, slave, servant, slave, servant, man, servant, subjects. Subject. Mm -hmm. Subject. Ooh. Hold on. Uh, Let's get Romans 13 real quick. Uh, it's more on that uh, definition. That was, that was just it. Oh, okay. I can do it with this stuff. I think. All right, let's start from the top. Uh, this is Romans 13 and verse 1. It says, let every soul be subject. Be subject. Mm. <laughs> let every soul be subject. Let's get that word subject real quick. Bobby yep. Kishab. Subject, it says, to arrange under, to subordinate. To, to arrange under, you know? Mm -hmm. To arrange under what? Under, under Yahabashim Yahushah. They've been arranged under Yahabashim Yahushah, you know? Yep. To subordinate, to subject, put in subjection, to subject to uh, oneself, obey, to subject to one's control. <laughs> to subject to one's control, which King Nebuchadnezzar was a servant, which means he was a subject 
to the will of Yahweh Yashab, which means we, we read in Jeremiah 27 how uh, he made all men and beasts of the earth to be subject to King Nebuchadnezzar. So they were supposed to be under his authority, basically. You know? Mm -hmm. And King Nebuchadnezzar was under the authority of uh Yahweh Yashab, which you know, which means King Nebuchadnezzar was anointed. You know, he was a heathen though, you know. So anybody could be anointed, you know. But like you was touching on, you know, you got those who are desecrated and those who are consecrated. But you could be anointed on the left hand, you know, profane, profanely be anointed. Mm -hmm. Like Esau, lest there be any profane person as Esau, you know, which mm -hmm. Esau is the sword of the Lord, you know. Mm -hmm. So when you try to buck up on Esau, you know, that's why it go back to Genesis, the fourth chapter, when it said you should receive sevenfold, you know. Because Esau was Cain in the reincarnation. So that's why, you know, when Jake tried to buck up against Esau, they end up getting to, to, the frame tore up out of them. You know what I'm saying? Because you're trying to buck up mm -hmm. against the will of Yahweh Shemel Shep. You know? Mm -hmm. Right. Like the story of, like, particular uh, uh, zealots or zealots. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? They're, like, doing something on their own will, thinking that, you know what I'm saying, you could really fight against the prophecies. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you're in captivity, hey, man. <laughs> Scriptures talk about, you know what I'm saying? No, no man shall buy you or redeem you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? No man's gonna bring you out of captivity, man. Right. If, it, if it ain't the Most High's will. Yeah, that's it. Yep. I got this here real quick in Proverbs 21:1. Mm -hmm. It says, "The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, as the rivers of water. He turneth it whithersoever he will." Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that's a good example. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar, he's a king, you know, mm -hmm. but his heart was in the hand of the Lord, man. Mm. He had full control of everything going on, man. You know, and that's what a lot of people today need to understand, man. You know, these so-called kings today, you know, <laughs> their heart is in the hand of the Lord too, man. You know, he's, a, he's in full control, man. This thing ain't just left up to chance, man. Yep. Uh, but, uh, you know what I'm saying? What are you saying? On the left-hand side, they, they were chosen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They were ordained on the left-hand side to execute particular things. Yep. Back in Romans 13 and verse 1, it says, Let every soul be subject unto higher powers. Let every subject be subject. I mean, so like let every soul, every soul, mm -hmm. it said, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Now, who are the higher powers? You know, what are those who are anointed? <laughs> you know, well, we can get higher powers. We can go into that too. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it goes into it here. It says, For there's no power but of Yahabashim Haushai. There we go. Servant, you know, those. Who are subject to Yahabashim Yahushua. You know, the authorities that are set up were set up by Yahabashim Yahushua. You know? Yep, it says here. The powers that be are ordained of Yahabashim Yahushua. Ordained, which ordained that came from, that, that was in uh, one of the synonyms yep. for consecrated, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so if you're anointed, you're consecrated. If you're consecrated, you're ordained. You know, which means if, if you know, what's, what's a word that's short for ordained? You're ordered. Yahweh mm. Shimashah ordering you to do something, mm. man. So you or you set up uh, by orders to ho hold this certain position or this certain rank, you know. Just like uh, Esau on the left hand side, he was set up and ordered by Yahweh Shimashah to be the damn devil, yep. you know. Mm -hmm. You can read down to, uh, three, y'all. Right? Verse two it says, "Whosoever therefore resisteth the power." Resisteth the ordinance of Yahabashim Hausha. Yeah, so whosoever resisted the power, uh, re resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of Yahabashim Hausha. So you pretty much bucket up against the orders of Yahabashim Hausha. When you try to buck up against the Lord's anointed, you're bucking up against his order, man. You know? Ultimately, you know? Yep. It says, and they that resist shall receive. To themselves damnation yeah they that resist and re receive unto themselves damnation you're damned man you know so if you you try to buck up on the wheel of your house you know you're 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 gonna get yourself in a real pickle man you know a, a, a real pickle that you ain't gonna be able to get up out of man you know mm -hmm. kind of and like i like quoting in first corinthians 14 and 40 where it says let all things be done decently and in order yep. you know what i'm saying you gotta really uh understand most high has this order in place, man. You know, every, everything, man. You know, if he can number, he has our hairs numbered, all right? Ain't, ain't a sparrow gonna fall without his command. You know what I'm saying? 
So what more men of the Lord who are out here doing this work, man? Men who are set up, men who are ordained as prophets, man. Mm. You know? So, you know, you got to take heed to, to the order that everything was put in place for a reason. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be thinking that, you know what I'm saying? Even you, you don't even have that inkling of like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? This is just, you know what I'm saying? I, I could twerk, I could twerk something out with it. Like, nah, man. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You want to make sure that you're doing decent and in order. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That you ain't resisting the will of your house and your house shot. Verse 3 says, For rulers are not a terror to good works. So if you're doing the right thing, a, a ruler not going to be a terror unto you, man. You know what I'm saying? That's why a lot of times uh, when we on the streets, while well, I was watching the apostles earlier in New York, you know, and you know, New York pretty much the epicenter for the coronavirus right now. And they was uh, on a strip, and the police just walked straight past me and didn't look at him. Mm. It was just like he was like it was like they was invisible. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like he didn't even say nothing. He just walked like straight zombie mode, man. Wow. You know, for cause cause rulers are not a terror to good works, man. You know, what? Why? Why in the hell the police gonna run up on you out here doing the will of Yah by Shem outside? Well, first and foremost, he anointed you to be out here. He consecrated. He gave you a divine purpose to do this. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So why? Are the powers that are at B gonna buck up against the will of Yahweh Hashem Yahshua? Because nobody can resist the will of Yahweh Hashem Yahshua. We read it in Romans the ninth chapter. Who has resisted His will? You know. So ultimately, you are gonna follow. You are gonna do whatever Yahweh Hashem Yahshua got you set up to do. Anyway, you ain't got no choice. You know. Just like King Nebuchadnezzar when he started getting high and mighty on himself and thinking he got his power on his own, Yahweh Hashem Yahshua took that power away from him. Why? Because he fulfilled his will already. He did what Yahweh Hashem Yahshua wanted him to do. Time, uh, bro. Yep. It says for rulers are not a terror to good works. So if you're doing if you're doing good works, rulers, those who are in position of ruling, that why why in the hell they gonna come up against you? They don't make no sense. If you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you know. Mm -hmm. But to the evil. Yeah, but to evil. So if you're doing bad, then that's when the rulers gonna get on your ass. You know. <laughs> that's, mm -hmm. that's that's when those who are ruling gonna come get get up on you. Right. It says, will thou then not be afraid of the power? So you ain't going to be afraid now? You know what I'm saying? Because obviously if they getting on you, then that means that you're doing something evil. So you're not, you mm, know, we, right. know we, we know that Yahweh Hashem Yahshua, he's not playing if your way is doing something evil. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like he's going to call you out. He's going he's gonna to see about you on that. You know what I'm saying? He's going to be like, hey, get that together before I, before I get you together. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you, you ain't going to be escaped, uh, afraid of, you know, Yahweh Hashem Yahshua jumping down your throat. You know, time, right? Because if you're a deceived prophet, then that's a whole nother story. You know what I'm saying? If you really uh <laughs> the evil, then and then you gotta worry about the rulers. You know what I'm saying? Nah, nah, yep, <laughs> God, yep. It says, uh, "Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power?" It says, "Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same." And we read it in Genesis the fourth chapter, where uh he told that the Cain he said, "If thou does as good, would thou not be accepted?" Mm. You know what I'm saying? If you if you was doing the right thing, would you not be accepted? But ultimately, Cain couldn't do the right thing. Why? Because he was anointed on the left hand side to be wicked. You know. But if you was anointed on the on the right hand, consecrated to the divine purpose of doing the will and righteousness and doing good, you know, you 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 gonna get praise of the same, just like Cain. You know, Cain was anointed on the right hand, and I mean, it's so like you. Abel was anointed on the right hand, mm -hmm. and Cain was anointed on the left. You know. Um, I was doing that. Uh, can you read 4 to us? Uh, verse 4 says, For he is the minister of Yahweh Hashem Hashai to thee for good. It says, But if thou do. So it says, He is the minister of Yahweh Hashem Hashai unto thee for good. You know, which really, uh, um, we read about how, you know, the, the rod of correction. You know, like in uh, Isaiah the 10th chapter, it says, uh, or Assyrian, the rod of mine anger, you know, and you know, pro and, and Proverbs will tell you that the rod of correction drive of uh, foolishness far away from you. So really, the rod of correction is is for your good, you know. These these uh, us being subject to these uh to these heathens and these different powers or whomever we're subject to is for our good, you know. It's to build us up, even being subject to these these damn devils, you know, because it's getting us right, you know. It's, it's helping mm -hmm. us realize, like, man, we, we don't need to buck up against Yahweh Shemashah. We need to get in order, man. You know? Mm -hmm. 
you know, respect the anointing. That's what it's ultimately teaching us, you know. That's right. Mm -hmm. It says, for he is the minister of Yahweh Shinav Shai to do for good. It says, but if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of Yahweh Shinav Shai, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Yeah, so Yahweh Shinav Shai got, <laughs> though he got people set up to execute uh, vengeance upon you when you, he, he got the anointing set up to execute vengeance upon you when you want to buck up on, buck up on you know. <laughs> they they going to execute vengeance on you, man. All right, that, which really, that's Yahweh Shinav Shai uh, executing vengeance on you. That's why you see uh, Jake, you know, uh, he, uh, like I seen a, a video earlier, this one Jake, he was running from the police, and uh, it was an Edomite just happened to be there when he was running, tripped his ass up, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> bust his face, and the police was like, I was gonna shoot you, man, you know what I'm saying, because he had a gun, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, yeah. but the Edomite just so happened to be there, you know yeah. what I'm saying, and tripped his ass up, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, when he was trying to run, man, you know, because why, because you was trying to buck up against the orders that be. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? The police jumped down his damn toe, man. Fuck it. Put their knee on, put his face all in the mud. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Probably bust his face. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's 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 what happened when you try to buck up against the uh, the, the, the rulers, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, we can go back to that. Jeremiah 27, unless you got something up. Uh, this is back in Jeremiah 27. And, um... Verse uh, 6, it says, And now I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. And the beast of the field have I given him also to serve him. Yeah, <laughs> so he said he gave man and beast into the hand of King Nebuchadnezzar to serve him. This, 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 so he's anointed King Nebuchadnezzar in the uh, position and rank over man and beast, you know. Says, and all the nations, and all nations shall serve him, and his son, and his son's son, until the very time of his land come. It says, and then many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him. And many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him, which means you got anointed other who others who were anointed set up to serve another anointed. You know, which I want to I want to go into a account of that. You know, after this, you know. Okay. Says, and it shall come to pass that the nation and kingdom which will not serve the same Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and that will not put their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, that nation will I punish, said the Lord Yahweh, with the sword and with the famine and with the pestilence until I have consumed them by his hand. <laughs> you see? So if you, Yahweh Shemashah saying, basically, if you don't, don't, don't touch my anointing. Touch not my anointing. Just sum it up. You know what I'm saying? Touch not my anointed and do uh, my prophets no harm. You know, which we know King Nebuchadnezzar, he wasn't a prophet, you know, but just uh, uh, don't, don't, basically his servants, you know, those who he have ordained, don't, don't mess with them. You know, don't try to buck up against them. Or what? I'm going to punish you, man. I'm going to punish you because you bucking up against the will. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, not to go too far, but like I brought out in uh, Jeremiah the first chapter. You know what I'm saying? He was he was ordained. Jeremiah was ordained as a prophet. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like um, you know, these Christians go into the whole uh, virgin birth thing. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Which being born of the Holy Spirit, that's all that's talking about. You you're ordained from birth. You know, so, Nebuch mm -hmm. so Nebuchadnezzar was born of the Holy Spirit. You know, in a sense. You right. know what I'm saying? Because he was ordained. Right. Kind. Yeah. That's 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 a hell of a point. Kind. Yep. Um, down verse eight. eight. I think. Uh, eight. Verse nine. It says, therefore, hearken not ye to your prophets, nor to your uh, diviners, diviners. It says, nor to your dreamers, nor to your enchanters, nor to your uh, sorcerers, which speak unto you, saying, ye shall not serve the king of Babylon. Ooh, hold on. Let's get a second Samuel 15 and 22. Real quick. Second Samuel 15 and 22. Don't hearken to your, your prophets. Ooh. Your prophets, it said, don't hearken to your prophets, diviners, enchanters, uh, nor your sorcerers who speak unto you, saying they should not serve the king of Babylon. You know, mm -hmm. why, why is that? Why is that? Uh, this is in uh, 1 Samuel 15 and 23. It says, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Because that's the sin of witchcraft. 
if 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 you try to hearken up, if you hearken up to these diviners and these enchanters, or, or these different prophets or sorcerers, you know, or you know, pretty much these demons, you know, ultimately, you know, you're you're uh you're being a witch, man. You're involving yourself mm -hmm. in witchcraft, man. And we know what the, the punishment for witchcraft is, man. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when I suffer a wish to live. Time, <laughs> you know. Uh, let's go to uh, that was it on uh, uh, Hebrews 13 to 17. This is in the Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 17. It says, Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch your souls. You see, what Romans the 13th chapter we read about that let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, man. You know mm -hmm. why? Because the higher powers are watching for your souls. You know why? Because you have Hashem outside anointed them to watch over your souls. You know, He consecrated them to do that. That's that that, that divine purpose that they were set up to do. You know, so it says, obey them that have the rule over you. You know, and rulers are not a terror to good works. You know, mm -hmm. so do what is good. You know, you ain't got, you ain't gonna have nothing to worry about. They, your, your your soul is gonna be straight. You know, mm -hmm. right. It says, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. For they watch your for your souls. It says as they must give account. As they must give account. It says they must give account. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So those who got rule of, over you, they gon' they're accountable for you. Just like uh the apostles and elders, you know, a lot of brothers, you know, they question a lot of things that the apostles and elders do, you know, or you know, you know, a lot of brothers like they talk a lot of stuff about the apostles and elders, man, but they they got a, a lot of work cut out for them, man. Mm -hmm. You know. They got a lot of work cut out for them. Yeah, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot of front, a lot of responsibility. Kind of, you know, camp leaders as well. You know, elders. You know, brothers themselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They got to be responsible for the brother that's next to them. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. everybody got to be accountable for each other from from the top on down to the bottom. Bottom. You know. Mm -hmm. Yep. It says that they may do it with joy. joy. Yeah, that you may do it with joy. It's not a stress unto you. You know what I'm saying? Because you know you got. Everybody bucking up against you all the time or not listening, you know, or not being in order, you know, trying to, you know, touch the anointed, man. You know, it, it, it makes it, it makes it harder on you, man. You know, that's why you got to understand, man. It's, it's hard on the apostles, man. You know what I'm saying? It's, they, they, it's hard on them, man. You know, because you got a lot, you know, Israel, you know, they Israel. Oh, my goodness. It's making rebellious people, man. Kind of, you know, so it's, you know. It's, it's tough, you know. Mm -hmm. It says, and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. So, for you. <laughs> so, I got hit by my father. Kind of, no. That was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was it on that verse. Kind, yeah. So, it says, for that is unprofitable for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? For you. Why? Because you, uh, you're doing that which is evil, man. You know, basically. And ultimately, what you have, I should they bear not the sword in vain, man. You know. So, you know, ultimately, you, you're going to receive damnation uh, unto yourself for doing that, you know, mm -hmm. for not obeying the rule or the rule that was set over unto you, man. You know, you basically you don't, don't fulfill, you, you don't feel that you have a shima shot, got it figured out. You feel like you can figure it out, you know. Come on. Yep. How's it on that one? Yeah, that was it. Uh, you got something? Um, yeah, I'm just about to go. I'll just use the phone, same thing. Yeah. And um, just to get to the point, verse 27, it says, Make not thyself an underling, see? Because ultimately we understand, you know, this is another question you want to ask yourself. So let me just read this. This is Sirach 4 and 27. Make not thyself an underling to a foolish man, neither accept the person of the mighty. That was the point. It says, it says Make not thyself an underling to a foolish man. So if someone's over you, you know what I'm saying? This is a question that you want to ask. Is, is, is he a person that, that you want to follow and be subjected to and, and rule? You know, mm. not, is, he, he's, is he really is he ruling well? Mm. You know, like the apostles and elders. You know, on down. Got you it. know, because if that's not the case, you know, the scriptures talk about you know a particular man is going to be leading the flock to the slaughter. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So you you don't want to be led astray either. You know, so you want to make sure like all right, you know what I'm saying? 
But if that if that's the case, if you trust if you trust uh, his his leadership, then you got you got to deal accordingly. Nah, you grab uh, First Thessalonians five and twelve. Uh, one of the precepts I had sent you uh, last week. You know, this is a heavy scripture. You know, you know, the brother had sent this to me. I was like, okay, yeah, this is. <laughs> I read it before several times, but it, it kind of like went over my head a little bit. You know, kind of. Yeah. This is First Thessalonians five and verse twelve. It says, "And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you." And are over you in the Lord. Hold on, over you in the Lord. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, whoa. You know what I'm saying? So you got men that's over you in the Lord. You know what I'm saying? A lot of brothers, they wouldn't agree with that. You know, but if they don't agree with that, they don't agree with scripture. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you don't agree with a man being over you in the Lord, I ain't no man over me in the Lord. We all men of the Lord. We all servants. We all men. But what this scripture just say right here said, what, read, read one more time. Kind of. Yep. Uh, First Thessalonians 5 and 12 it says, and we beseech you. So beseech means to beg. That means I beg you. I beg you, you know. Mm -hmm. Brethren, it says, to know them which labor among you mm -hmm. and are over you in the Lord. And are over you in the Lord, man. So you got brothers that are over you in the Lord, man. You know, mm -hmm. they could be somebody younger than you, older than you. You could be five years older than them, five, ten years older than them, and they mm -hmm. over you in the Lord, mm -hmm. you know. They know you have Hashem Hashem. He see him not as men see him. Right. You know, First Samuel the sixteenth chapter. You know. Yep. Mm -hmm. it says and admonish you and admonish you, man. You know, which we went into that word admonish. What, what it meant again? Uh, uh, warn. 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 Huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> God. Gosh. Yep. That's that's heavy, man. God. You got the ears to hear, man. It says. Let me see. Read that one more time. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you. To know them which labor among you. And are over you in the Lord and admonish you. Mm -hmm. So you have to you have to know, true, truly know, you know what I'm saying? What you're a part of and how this thing works. You uh -huh. know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And it says, verse 13, to esteem the to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Ooh, for their for their work's sake. That's another thing too. For their work's sake. It said esteem them and to esteem them very highly. It's, it's and to esteem them. Very highly, are for uh, in in love. <laughs> so you know it's, mm -hmm. it's in love too. You're supposed to esteem them very highly in love. Mm -hmm. That's a part of uh, brotherly love, part of your charity. You know, for their work's sake, for their work's sake. So you can't say that work don't mean nothing, man. You know, mm -hmm. brothers who've been laboring in this truth. You know, putting in work, man. Hey, man, you gotta esteem them high. You know, you got to esteem them high, man, for, and, and love for what they be doing. Why? Because, shit, through, through their works, you know, of course, through the spirit of power, you have Hashem Yashah, they bringing this place down so we can get the hell up out of here, man. You know, so you're supposed to have heavy love and admiration for them, man. You know, and respect unto them, you know, mm -hmm. especially from the apostles, man. Right. You know, 30 plus years, man, doing this work, man. You mm -hmm. know, you, you got to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, you know. It says, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, mm -hmm. and be at peace among yourselves. And be at peace among yourselves. So be cool with it, man. You know what I'm saying? Don't mm -hmm. don't be rattled in your spirit like, damn, I don't know if that's right. You know, I don't know if I should fuck with that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't really trying to listen to that. You know, I don't think that's right. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna try this out. Nah, man, be mm -hmm. at peace among yourselves, man. You know what I'm saying? If 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 it came out, it came out. You know what you don't trust. What you don't trust the will of Yahweh Hashem outside. That's what it really comes down, come down to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it says now we extort you, brethren. Warn them that are unruly. Unruly. <laughs> you know, warn them that are unruly, man. You you don't want to be subject to the rule. You're unruly. You know. Mm -hmm. It says comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak. Be patient toward all men. Yeah, that's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be patient towards all men, you know. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be uh, quick to, uh, you know, uh, quick to uh, just buck up or jump down somebody's throat, man. You know, you got to be patient towards men or all men, you know, especially to those who got to rule over you, you know what I'm saying? Because 
uh, you gotta realize that they they was put in this pit and position by you. How about you, my son? You gotta let uh, patience have her perfect work, like the scriptures say. You know. Oh no. Beautiful. It says, see that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Yes, yeah, so don't re render evil for evil. So like, even if you don't agree with something, you feel like it's evil, that the, the person that's set up uh, over you, you know, or anointed over you is uh, doing, you don't supposed to render them back evil for that. You know what I'm saying? Kind of. It said, but ever follow that which is good. Why? Because we read in Romans 13, uh, chapter, if you do good, should you not have praise in the same? Mm. You know? Yeah. Both among yourself and to all men. To all men. <laughs> that's another thing, too, man. That's that's a key yeah. in this thing, too. You got to be, we, we've been going into that heavy. The Spirit been having us heavy on that lately. You know? Mm -hmm. Like, it's uh, especially of those of the household of faith, but to all men, man. This is how you got to conduct yourself. Why? Because... Uh, you you have everybody set up for their own divine purpose, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and you and you never know what somebody can come up out of, man. You know, you ne you, you yeah. never know what somebody can come out of. You know, like Manasseh, King King yeah. Manasseh. You know, mm -hmm. you put me on that. You know, mm -hmm. kind. You were all those men. Kind, you know? brother. I mean, kind. you know, in one in some ways or another, you know. So yeah, we want. Like I keep, you know, quoting, you know, First Corinthians fourteen four. Let all things done decently in order. Oh, let's get it. Yeah, <laughs> I got you. Huh? We can't just be out here just just winging and thinking that because this is high level business. Like the brother be bringing out, like nah. this is high level business. This nah, is bro. this isn't something that you could just, you know what I'm saying? Wake up and be like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get this art. You know what I'm saying? Like any other business or hustle, brothers be, you know, brothers could do. Or, right. You know what I'm saying? On the legitimate side, you know, like um, you know, my cousin he he been chauffeur. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You do it sometimes. You don't. You know what I'm saying? A lot of, a lot of Jake, you know what I'm saying? We be, you know, taking other ways around, you know what I'm saying? Not necessarily get a chauffeur's license and do particular things. But something like this, nah, man. You got to you gotta play this you thing. You got to come correct. You got to come correct. Yeah. You can't if, just, if, yeah. You, if you ain't got something correct, you got to correct it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you mm -hmm. can't just keep going on uh, with whatever you got missed. Like, you got to go get it straight. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Oh, I got that for you. Uh, this is 1 Corinthians 14 and 40. Let all things be done decently and in order. Mm -hmm. All things, man. You know, need to be done decently and in order, man. That, that's like a, a very big part, man. Especially, you know what I'm saying? We're talking about brothers who were camping, you know, for the most part, man. You know, we, you know, it needs to say, I can hear me listen. Let all things be done decently and in order, man. You know, how you, how you deal with people in the world, family members, you know, at, at home. You know what I'm saying? All that needs to be done decently and in order, according to knowledge, as the scriptures bring out, you know, in the, in the household. But, you know what I'm saying? When it comes to camp, you know, let all things be done decently and in order. Like like I, like I just said, this is high-level business, man. We talking about gathering the elect. Mm. That's a high-level, that's the highest uh, work that you can do on this side. Mm -hmm. So you, you can't be taking this thing as a as something light, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, uh, you know, like, nah, man. Every scripture was, was made for for, uh, for what? For our learning. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. For us to be meditating in. You know? Right. Let's see. Uh, uh, we got this thing too. It's Sirach 40. I mean, it's like it's Sirach 4 and 30. Be not as a lion in thy house, nor frantic among thy servants. <laughs> you know? Mm. So, uh, you got that. Let's get that word frantic in there too. Kind of, kind of, yep. Yeah, that's the spirit, cause yeah, I, I just brought out verse twenty-seven. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yep. But uh, yeah, be not as a lion in thy house, nor frantic among thy servants. You know, and that goes back into being decent in order, man. Everything is put in place for a particular reason. You don't want to be out of season. You know, brothers, bring that out. You know what I'm saying? You want to do things out of season. Well, ultimately, you know what I'm saying? You gotta make sure that you're not that lion in, in the house, or mm. you're, you're frantic among the servants. Like you just, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You doing something out of season? Mm -hmm. Get the word frantic. The word frantic, insane. <laughs> Explain <laughs> unexplained variant of frenzy. You know, mm -hmm. affected by wild excitement. You know, come on, man. And this is among thy servants. So you put out in verse twenty-seven to not be an underling to a foolish man. Mm. So you don't be that foolish man either. You don't be that foolish man among among uh, the servants, among men. You know what I'm saying? 
poor under you. You don't be that be that fool, just frantic and just, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, what the hell? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, bro. yeah, I'm head out. Like, <laughs> good, bro, good. It say, oh, in the Google definition, uh, it say, wild or distraught with fear, anxiety or other emotion, conducted in a hurried, excited and cha chaotic way, typically typically because of the need to act quickly. So that, that goes into being patient towards all men again, man. You know, you can't you, you can't uh, let uh, emotions overrun you, man. You know, you gotta okay, you gotta sit back, and sometimes you gotta just uh, take. You, well, a lot of times you gotta take the low, man. You know, mm -hmm. and in the situation, man, you might not necessarily agree with something, but you might have to just rock it out. You know what I'm saying? And, and at, at the end, it's gonna be revealed. You know, it said there. What what uh what. What it say in uh, Luke 8 and 17? Yeah, what I said, there is no secret or thing that should not be made manifest, man. You know, or, mm -hmm. or, or, or be revealed, just roughly paraphrase. So, yeah, how about she not shy? At the end of the day, he going he gonna to call a spade a spade, you know. Try not. Uh, you got something up? First Timothy 5 and 1 says, Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren. You got it. Uh, yeah, if you go into uh, that word uh, rebuke, you know, uh, the first definition means to like beat or strike upon or, you know, chide on. You know, so basically you ain't going to be just buttoned up, you know what I'm saying, on, uh, on those who are you know, elder brothers, you know, especially like literal elders, like, you know, the apostles. Like, what you look like running up on a pasta tar? Like, I don't like what you said, but what's up? You know what I'm saying? Like, trying <laughs> yeah. to square up on them or something. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. or you even talking crazy to them. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. they're old enough to be my grandfather age, man. Like, have some respect here. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, yep. don't be, you know what I'm saying? But ultimately, like, you know, like Bishop Nathan, he, he's old enough almost to be our grandfather. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to just straight up disrespect him either. You know what I'm saying? But we're going to be like, hey. You talking about taking vaccines, you tripping. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you need to get that together. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't agree with that. You know what I'm saying? But you're not finna just be talking crazy. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? This this is an elder brother, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, have some respect here. You know right. what I'm saying? Yep. Just like it says, it says, but entreat him as a father. Con. You know? And that's what you talk about. Honor thy father, thy mother. That's Con. how you're supposed to deal with your father and your mother, right? So that's how, how you're supposed to be dealing, man. Exactly. Con. Even like, even my pops, you know, he be saying some off stuff, man. I ain't gonna be like, Pops, man, F you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. F you and that SH, you know what I'm yeah. saying? You talk about, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, come on, get that together. Like, no, nah, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, Pops, I don't know about that. You know what I'm saying? It's a way to do things. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. right. I was just gonna jump down to 17. All right, brother. It says, uh, this is 1 Timothy 5 and 17. It says, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. Woo, let the elders that rule well that rule well, you know, <laughs> rule in goodness, you know, and righteousness like we've been going into be counted the double honor, man. And counting the double honor just don't mean saying double honors. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That means uh, giving them double honors in, in your action, man. You know, because mm -hmm. actions speak louder than words. You know, like we was touching on uh, love, you know, uh, how it said in First Thessalonians 5, esteem them in love for the work's sake. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's, that's giving them double honors, you know by, you know, respecting them highly and, and, and following after them completely and being subject unto them, you know, not just saying double honors, you know, you give them double honors as well, you know, but uh, in your deeds as well, man, right. you know, in your deeds as well, you, 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 you follow after them and give them double honors, you know. Yep, God says, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. <laughs> especially them who labor in the word and doctrine, man. Because you, hey man, it's, it's, this, this is a, a small sanctuary, man. Mm -hmm. This is a small sanctuary. It's, it's not like you just gonna find brothers who come in in the right doctrine, laboring in the, in the, in the right manner, you know what I'm saying? Doing things uh, to the best of their abilities according to the scriptures, man. That's, that's, that's hard to come across, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Especially mm -hmm. brothers who are doing it consistently year by year, week by week, day by day. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey man, you 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 gotta you gotta respect them, man. You know, mm -hmm. and respect the order they set up. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
at the end of the day, that's it's what's what you how about now? So I got set up, man. You know. We can't, y'all about to see my son and uh, he and him want us out here free, free, uh, freestyle. Right. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Free, freelancing. Yeah, freelancing. Yeah. Is the word. <laughs> yeah, God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Want us out here freelancing, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, it's already enough coming from niggas in the world into men of the Lord. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So he, like, okay, that's already hard enough. He's going to give you some kind of structure with that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you mm-hmm. can help keep it in order as best as possible. You know, of course, it ain't going to be, per, you know, everything perfect. But at the end of the day, it is perfect. You right. know, because it, it's what you have by Shemel Shai got set up, you know. Mm-hmm. Right. That's right. Mm-hmm. That scripture is right to get it. It talks about the strength is made perfect in weakness. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So even particular things, like you're saying, like, it's not necessarily perfect on the side. Right, we can have, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, I wish, you know what I'm saying? It was like this. But ultimately, it's not perfect on the side, man. And that's going to make us. Strong. That's gonna make us, you know what I'm saying, be able to endure sound doctrine. Because mm-hmm. that's this is all part of endure sound doctrine. You know, following order. You know what I'm saying? That's that's part of the doctrine. That's a part of enduring. You know what I'm saying? Alright, yep. Uh, can we get this? Uh, we got some up. Nah, we got. We get this first summary. Twenty six, and then uh, probably got one more. Uh, this is in uh, the first Samuel twenty six. Mm-hmm. This is uh, 1 Samuel chapter 26 and 1. It says, And the Ziphites came unto Saul and to uh, uh, Gibeah. Gibeah. It says, Saying, Doth not David hide himself in the hill of Pekaliah? Uh, Hakila? It says, Which is before Jeshima? Then Saul arose and went down to the wilderness of Ziph. Having three thousand chosen men of Israel with him to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph, and Saul pitched in the hill of Pekaliah, which is before Jeshimon. By the way, it says, but David abode in the wilderness, and he saw that Saul came after him to the wilderness. Mm-hmm. David therefore sent out spies and understood that Saul was come in very deep. It says, and David arose and came to the place where Saul had pitched. And David beheld the place where Saul lay, and Abner, the son of Ner, the captain of his host, and Saul lay in the trench, and the people pitched round about him. Mm-hmm. Then answered David and said to uh, Ahimelech the Hittite, and to Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, the brother of Joab, it says, saying, Who will go down with me to Saul to the camp? And Abishai said, I will go down with thee. So David and Abishai came to the people by night, and behold, Saul lay sleeping within the trench, and his spear stuck in the ground at his bolster, but Abner and the people lay round about him. Then said Abishai to David, The Most High hath delivered thine enemy into thine hand this day. Now therefore let me smite him, I pray thee. God, so Abishai was like, hey, let's, hey, he been staking out on us, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, Hey, he, he trying to kill us, man. Like, man, we got the upper hand on him. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and take him out. Take him out. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It says, um, now therefore let me smite him, I pray thee, with the spear even into the earth at once. <laughs> He's like, man, I'll, I'll, I'll kill him right now. I'll slice his head <laughs> on one, one right stroke. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Right now. And I will not smite him the second time. No, he's like, man, yeah. one hit. All I need is one, one. shot, one kill. <laughs> and David said to Abishai, destroy him not. For who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord, Yahweh's anointed, and be guiltless? Woo! That's the point right here. Uh. <laughs> he said, read that last one, verse one more time. Uh. Uh, and David said to Abishai, destroy him not. For who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord, the Lord, Yahweh's anointed, and be guiltless. Yeah, so if you do that, you're not going to be guiltless out here. You know what I'm saying? Well, we read about it in Romans the 13th chapter. You're receiving damnation unto yourself, man. You know? <laughs> you're going to pay for that. If you buck up against the Lord's anointed, you're going to have to pay for that, man. You know? Point blank, period. You know, that, that's why we got to move real careful out here, man. Make sure we moving in season and in order, like the brother was saying, man. You know? Because shit, we, 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 we trying to be guiltless. Right. You know? We trying to be guiltless. Right. That goes 
just being the elect, being anointed, man. Be without blame, without without guile. Kind, huh? Kind. You read to 10 as well. Verse 6. Kind says, David said, Furthermore, as the Lord Yahweh liveth, the Lord Yahweh shall smite him, or his day shall come to die, or he shall descend into battle and perish. Right, so King David knew the will of Yahweh. I said, he's like, he's anointed to fulfill a certain divine purpose and will. You know what I'm saying? I don't like what he's trying to do. I don't like that he's trying to kill me. But ultimately, I believe in Yahweh Hashem Yahshua, and I believe that, you know, Yahweh Hashem Yahshua is going to take care of, uh, he set him up for a reason to fulfill a certain purpose and a certain will, and I know he's going to take him out when, he, when there's no more need for him. Like we're touching on King Nebuchadnezzar, you mm -hmm. know? Come. It says, the Lord Yahweh forbid that I should stretch forth my hand against the Lord Yahweh's anointed. But I pray thee, take thou now the spear that is in his bolster in the curse of the water and let us go. And see, that's what made King David a man after the most high's heart, man. You know, because he uh, was uh, he was merciful, first and foremost. You know, he had, he had mercy and true love, you know, like you have by shot, you know, and uh, he, he was obeying his will, you know. That's what makes you a man of the most high's heart, man. When you have you have mercy, you know, and love, you know, two key components, you know, that you have to have as a man of the Lord. Plus, you 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 obey his will, regardless if you don't agree with it or not. You know, I mean, so like if, regardless if you don't feel like this might be, you know, like is this right or something? You know what I'm saying? Like that that might not be his will, but ultimately. You know, how about you gonna work it out in the end? You know, you gotta just trust. That's that's having faith. You know, which is another key uh, key key factor uh, of of being a man after the Most High's heart. You know, what I'm saying he said he don't. It, it's impossible to please him without faith. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You know, that was that was, King David was diligently seeking him to the point where King Sa Saul was trying to put him to death, but he still. Uh, Continue to, uh, you know, try to follow, you know, follow after the will of Yahweh Hashem you mm -hmm. know. Uh, and we can get, uh, you got some, bro? Yeah, you got Um, let me see, uh, let's see if it's, uh, um, oh, let's get Proverbs 16. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 33, it says, The lot is cast into the lap, but the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord Yahweh. John, so you can cast a lot on something. You can cast a lot on something, but ultimately, Yahweh Shem uh determines, you know, he, he has the uh, end, he, he, he has the end, he's the end all be all in, in, in the matter. You know what I'm saying? So ultimately, it, a, a lot can fall on something. You'd be like, damn, why did that happen? You know, because Yahweh Hashem got a purpose for it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yahweh Hashem Yahshua got a purpose for it, man. Like, uh, lots don't just fall on stuff for no reason. You know? Mm -hmm. Kinda. Yeah. Right. Uh, let's get out there at 45, bro. Start from the top out. Come on, this is in Isaiah 45 and 1 that says, Blessed the Lord Yahweh to his anointed, to Cyrus. Who King Cyrus was his anointed? King Cyrus was his anointed, you know. Whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations before him. It says, And I will loose the loins of kings to open him, stop it, to open before him the two leaves gates, mm -hmm. and the gates shall not be shut. Says, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. Mm -hmm. It says, I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in the sunder of the bars of iron. Mm -hmm. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord Yahweh, which called thee by thy name, am the power of Israel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically, you know, point on that, you know, Yahweh Shem Yahshua do whatever the hell he 
just point blank period, man. You know, anybody can be anointed, you know. Kind of, bro. Let's go with Kind of, you got this love. For Jacob, my servant's sake, is Israel mine elect. I have even told thee by thy name, I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. Yeah, so, you know, Israel is anointed. You know, he that touches you touches the apple of mine eye. This is in verse 5. I am the Lord Yahweh. There is none else. There is no power beside me. I gird thee, though thou hast not known me. None. Yeah, because he has a divine purpose and will for you. You know? Yep. This is that Even thing. if you don't understand it, you know, Yahweh still has a purpose and will for everything, even if you can't understand it. You mm -hmm. know? Right, right. Back when we talked about um, casting a lot. Kind of, bro. Earlier, like, you could cast a lot for something. Ultimately, you know, the reason it fell on a particular lot, it might not be simple and plain all the time. It might be, you know what I'm saying? Most high thoughts are on our thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Bro. It could fall on that lot just for a particular reason, but it's not going to reveal itself until, you know what I'm saying? Until it, happen, until it happens. Yeah, bro. Yep. Verse 6, um, it says, verse 6, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord. There is none else. I form the light, I create darkness, I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. There you go right there. That's it right there. <laughs> we don't even got to go no further right there. You know, that summed it all the way up, man. Mm -hmm. You know, that summed it all the way up. I wanted to get to Sirach 45 out uh, there. That, yeah, that's a good ending point. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You read that one more time, Rob? Uh? Yes, sir. Yeah, kind of. Oh, sorry. This is uh, Isaiah 45 and 7 says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Yep. So that's it, man. You know, the Lord separate the holy from the unholy. <laughs> you know, the clean from the unclean. The, anoint, the consecrated from the desecrated. You know, yep. the anointed on the right hand and anointed on the left. You know, those who gonna buck up and those who gonna obey the will. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Two things are set against another, you know. Mm -hmm. Like they say, it's a rock 33, you know. Yeah, that's it. You know, the point on this, hey, you know, touch not mine anointing, you know. Yeah, hey, stay your ass in order, man. You know, speak, speaking to ourselves first and foremost, you know. We got we got to get better with this ourselves, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, stay, stay your ass in order or receive damnation to yourself, you know. It's an easy choice, really, you know. Right. <laughs> yep. If you really have faith, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, but that's it. Uh, so, you got anything else to add? No, that was it. All right, so with that, we want to give our praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahusha, Ba'ashem, Rukakadash. Double honor to the Apostle and Elder, the great millstone, who rules well, and taught us his truth. The people said, We patience to the house of David, the elect man, pushing his truth and faith sincerely. Shalom to the elect. Shalom.